Hello all. Um, so this video is going to be a quick uh, explainer on uh, searches, uh, how to create you know custom search bars, and then filter lists based on what the user inputs here. Um, there are a couple of different ways to do it. Um, you know the most common way to do it is to in, within this list just filter the list based off of um, you know if someone types in types something into this box, you know if the name contains whatever's in this input display that here. Um, and you can definitely do it this way, but you run into issues when you're trying to filter it based off of two different properties. Um, and the issue with that is that maybe they're searching for something like um, burger or something like that, in this case because we're dealing with recipes. Um, maybe, the, maybe the name does not contain burger, um, and, but the description does. Well, it's still not going to show that particular record because you're asking it to filter if the name contains the input. Um, and the name may not contain the input, um, or vice versa. Um, so it's really kind of difficult to do it based off of two different properties. Um, so I'm going to show you a little hack uh, that you can use uh, to search for many different properties, both name, description, category, whatever you want to do all at once. Um, so we'll just delete these. And to get started, uh, I've just got a home page here with an add recipe button, uh, the recipe list. I've got you know a search bar here, which we'll change in a minute. And then I've got an add recipe screen, which we will add um, a form to. Uh, and then we'll add another screen over here for, for another uh, purpose that I'll show you in a second. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my recipe database here. And I'm actually going to add um, a property, a text property um, called... Uh, I've seen people different call it different things like appended search or search index. Um, I'm just going to call it search index. Um, and what this property is going to be is it's going to be this property, you know, name, description, and category all put into one field, um, so that we're we're only searching this search index to get a result here. Um, so we're gathering name, description, and category, and we're just throwing it all into one field, basically. Um, and to do that, uh, it gets kind of tricky, uh, because if you've ever tried to add a form, which we'll do right now, um, if you've ever tried to do two actions with a form, uh, you'll notice that uh, the subsequent actions from that form don't always complete properly. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So this is going to be a, a list of recipes here. I want it to create a new recipe. And the fields, um, we don't need a picture or the search index. And I want the user to be able to set the category. So we're going to add that as a visible field instead. All right. So we've got name, description, and category. Um, you can add other actions to this Submit button. Um, and ideally what we want to do is we want to update the brand new recipe. We want to update that search index with the information that the user just put in here so that they can search by any of that info. Uh, the problem is that if I add the update action here, uh, it's not always going to execute. Sometimes it, it, it creates the recipe and then moves on to the next step to updating it uh, before the first one has, has time to complete uh, fully. So to kind of get around this, what we're going to do is we're, we're actually going to create a blank screen. And blank screens are, are, a, are a brilliant hack. Like, it's, it's just great. Um, we'll call this update recipe. We'll create the screen. And let me move this over to where we need it here. Okay. Um, so this form is actually going to link to this update recipe screen after it's done creating it. So we're just going to link to the update recipe. Hopefully I'm picking the right one there. Not sure why there's two. Uh, and we'll do none. And what I want to do is I want to set an action for this. Uh, actually, let's let's rename this so that I can make sure that we're choosing the right one here. Okay, good. So what I want to do is I want to set an action for this screen so that when a person visits this screen, it 
is going to update the current recipe, which is, keep in mind, the one that we just created right here. So I'm going to update the current recipe, and I'm going to change this search index to be now the current recipe's name, to be the current recipe's description, and the current recipe's uh, categories name, because those are all three three things that I want uh, the search to to uh, the user to be able to search. So I'll click done there, and then I'm going to add a link to the home page so that it takes us back uh, so that we can see the the uh, the recipes there. All right. So that's the first uh, little part there. The second part is just creating the search bar and filtering it. So there's several different ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to show you the most complex way to build a search bar um, that looks kind of the most interesting, I think. Um, and you can absolutely go in here and play around with the border and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let's say that you wanted to add like, you know, an icon right here. Uh, at the beginning of the search bar, or an icon over here for filtering. Um, let's let's go ahead and do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the placeholder um, to be uh, have a couple of spaces in it here because I'm going to put an icon right here, uh, like a search icon. All right, and uh, I'm also going to kind of shorten this up just a little bit here, and let's turn off the border. And let's turn off the background too. Um, so I've just got this text with kind of this invisible outline here. And then what I'm going to do is add a a rectangle to this. We're going to kind of line it up, you know, as best we can. Um, we'll turn the background off, and let's turn the border on. Make it a, maybe a different color or something like that. And we'll boost the rounding on it. So now we've got this nice um, kind of deceptive, um, people don't realize that it's two components, but it is. Um, and let's actually move the rectangle behind the input field there. There we go. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a symbol right here. Uh, let's just put a search symbol so that people know that this is a search bar. Um, it, the button's not actually going to do anything. It's just going to be kind of a, a placeholder so that they know what it's for. All right, and uh, let's add like a filter icon over here. Uh, we're not going to get into filtering in this uh, tutorial, but let's just do it for um, demonstration purposes here. Um, and the reason that I shorten this text box is because if the user searches something that's super long right here, um, maybe I don't want them to be able to, uh, to you know, uh, I don't want their text to go behind this icon. And kind of honestly the same thing with this one. So maybe I'll just move, let's just move the, the text box and just kind of get rid of this. There we go. All right, so I've got my text box. It looks like it's all one piece, but it's really just this section right here that they can type in. Um, and this button could do something if you wanted it to. This could lead to maybe a filtering page where they could filter um, by step number or, you know, true, false, some other property that's not searchable. Um, that's a good way to do that. All right, and then maybe this list here, I sound like Bob Ross right now. Maybe we've got a little uh, filter friend here um, where the filter, we want to set the filter such that um, whatever appears in this list, uh, the search index contains whatever the user puts into that input. All right, so this input is, is just this input here. Um, I'm asking for all recipes where the search index contains the input. And because we've updated the search index over here, um, it's going to contain both the name, the description, and the category all in one. All right, so let's, um, let's give this a test and, and see what happens. Hopefully I didn't forget to link anything together here. All right. Okay, cool. So we've got our, our search box there, and these will actually disappear uh, once I add a search index here. So let's just add something else like a slimy burger. Yeah. 
slimiest burger ever, and the category may be lunch or something like that. All right. And so there's slimy burger. Let's uh, let's go ahead and add one more just so that we've got some more info here to search by. Um, and this is going to be definitely does uh, definitely dinner. We'll create that recipe. Remember, it's linking to that empty screen and kind of sending us back. Uh, the user that's that's not too bad. The user doesn't is not really going to notice that. Uh, and you could even make it no transition between the two if you wanted to. All right, so let's give this a test. Let's search for nasty casserole. There we go. All right. Um, let's search for burger. So we get burger. Now let's search for maybe the category. So we get something that pops up. There's slimy burger for lunch. Um, and let's search for dinner. And we get that. Um, so that's kind of how you create a, a search bar that can search many different properties. It looks great. Um, and uh, it, it functions pretty well. Um, hopefully uh, I'll get to making a video about filtering as well, which works similar in, in a similar way. Um, uh, but uh, I hope that was helpful for you. Again, as always, if I can help, uh, comment, uh, email, visit my website, subscribe, whatever you need to do, all that jazz, and uh, I'll help as best I can.